Welcome back to Network Africa. We're staying in Nigeria where Innocent Adibia, also known as Two-Face, is visiting Borno State to support the work of UNHCR in the protection of internally displaced persons and refugee returnees. His visit is part of a partnership with the agency to raise awareness and help support people affected by the crisis in Nigeria's northeast. When news spread that Nigeria's music star, Innocent Adibia, had been spotted at a camp for displaced civilians in the northern state of Borono. A crowd of excited fans, hoping to catch a glimpse of the artist, gathered in minutes. The musician, popularly known as Tubaba or Tufesi Dibia, visited people affected by an eight-year conflict in the region waged by militant group Boko Haram. Tubaba is partnering with the UN refugee agency, UNHCR, to raise awareness about the crisis in the region. To raise more awareness so that many people will come, come donate many things, and to make life easier for them. You know, then to go tell the rest of Nigeria, say, people, their brothers and sisters, they here with the suffer, maybe they can't help them. The Nigerian militant group Boko Haram has been fighting over the years to recreate an Islamic caliphate around Lake Chad, where Nigeria, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad meet. Boko Haram attacks have killed more than 20,000 people and displaced 2.7 million in the region, according to eight agency figures. Tubaba visited camps located in Ngala, near the border with Cameroon, which hosts about 94,000 people. 35-year-old Algoni Abubakar fled here with his family after Boko Haram attacks in their home area. He told the celebrity that the extremists killed their neighbors and burned their homes. Tubaba spent time with a few other families to show solidarity and better understand their plight. He has since been urging his fans, especially Nigerians, to give what they can to help displaced people. Feeling overwhelmed by sadness and wonder, you know, sadness in the sense of, you know, when I look at these people's faces, I see, you know, I see that feeling of hopelessness, that feeling of abandon, you know, that feeling of despair, you know, and it touches my heart, you know, to, to know that this, these things could have been avoided. We are trying to give uh, people the necessary, but the funding is not enough for us to, uh, uh, to do uh, more than what we have done, especially in terms of uh, providing basic uh, need for uh, uh, IDPs and returnees. Uh, so with uh, this kind of partnership and contribution of Tubaba, we are hoping that uh, this will raise awareness not only at uh, a local level, also international level for people to understand that uh, people are suffering, we need to help them. Tubaba sang his single, Hold My Hand, with the children, which was launched on World Refugee Day this year. He has committed part of the proceeds from the song to help the affected population. Away from Nigeria now, the absence of snow in Egypt did not stop Special Olympians as they trained for snow showing on sand and not snow. They've won medals at the Winter Games. The four-member snowshoe team, who had been learning disabilities, had never seen snow before. Upon arrival in Austria, they were able to go win gold in the relay as well as individual medals. For Egypt's Special Olympics athletes, a lack of snow in their homeland did not stop them from winning medals at this year's Winter Games after training on a surface that Egypt has, plenty of sand. The four-member snowshoe team of two men and two women with learning disabilities had never seen snow before arriving in Austria for the tournament, but they were prepared, winning gold in the relay as well as individual medals. When we were preparing the trip to Austria, our training would take place in a similar environment to the one in which we would be competing. As you know, we were going to compete in snowshoeing in Austria, which involves running on snow. 
And in Egypt, we don't have snow, so we were preparing by training on sand as a substitute. They trained for two months by strapping on snowshoes and running across the sandy beaches of Alexandria on Egypt's Mediterranean coast. A training regime they have kept up since the 2017 World Winter Games, which brought together 2,700 competitors from 107 nations in March. Our training continues throughout the year. If we are not preparing for winter sports, then we are preparing for summer sports. If we are competing for Nanda, then we continue to train them because we are concerned with their fitness. The benefit of the Special Olympics is not only a health tool, but also it helps those who participate feel that they are integrated in the community and promotes their personal self-worth. They are able to feel that they can contribute to the community in any way. Egypt sent 20 athletes to the Games to compete in snowshoeing and floor hockey, selecting them from local track and field competitions for the disabled. Gian Hosni is a proud mother of Alaha, a daughter who she says began running in a local sports club. When she was a little child, she began to be involved in the Zamalek Sporting Club and took part in special needs races there. She was always training. She trained in swimming, strength and running. She was good at the strength training and had the ability to run a lot. She was always training and entered many competitions. So we thank God. The Egyptian team now has its eyes on the 2019 World Summer Games in Abu Dhabi. And talking health matters now, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency is planning to roll out a new community health volunteer scheme to enhance mobilization of Nigerians to routine immunization at the grassroots. The program, which will start in Sokoto State, is also expected to open or to deepen the fight against child killer diseases. Nigeria's health sector is ranked poor by the World Health Organization's recent ranking, which put Nigeria 187 on the list of 191 member states. According to a 2015 UNICEF report, every single day, Nigeria loses about 2,300 under five year olds and 145 women of childbearing age. This makes the country the second largest contributor to the under five and maternal mortality rate in the world. Routine immunization is key to reversing the situation. Unfortunately, Nigeria is ranked among countries with unimpressive record in routine immunization coverage. At this meeting, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and her partners are meeting the Sokoto State Government to discuss strategies to improve routine immunization at the grassroots. The government uh, and people of Sokoto State will be collaborating with Sokoto State to launch uh, and roll out the first uh, intervention in primary health care, which is uh, uh, a scheme that involves community health workers. We already see what the government has done, so MPACDA will roll out the community health informers, promoters, and service providers first in Sokoto State as a show of our confidence that this environment is already suitable for us to scale up uh, this cadre of workers. Uh, as you are aware, uh, VOCID is very active in, as a partner across sectors in uh, Sokoto, so we're taking advantage of this uh, trip to uh, see activities in, in the health, education, uh, governance, and agriculture sectors. The federal government has received requests for technical support from the state government on routine immunization, and already that request has been implemented. In his remarks, the governor of Sokoto State commended USAID and the National Primary Health Care Development Agency for their commitment in improving health governance structures and well-being of the people of Sokoto State. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching IMBC Adivaya.